Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to head out to the Czech Republic once again and this is yet another of the beers that I brought back with me from my recent trip over there. So for this one we're going to have a look at a beer from Svato Kovetsky Pivo who are from a little bit out to the east of Olomouc where I was doing some of my teaching stuff. So this beer is called the Karel, it's a Tamavi special, kind of similar to a German Dunkel if you like and it comes in at 5.6% and one of the other interesting things you might have noticed about this. It's a plastic bottle and this actually seems to be really quite popular amongst craft breweries in uh, the Czech Republic. I don't know, it's probably cheaper than using glass I would guess actually. I'm not sure how it goes in terms of recycling and things like that over there but um, an interesting concept. I'll be interested to see how the beers lasted. I am actually having to film this one pretty quickly after uh, getting off the plane because the beer did, um, you know, the bottle did actually swell up and that would just be to, due to the differences in pressures and things like that. So I'll need to get this guy uh, drunk before before it's, it's too before it's too late, if you like. Hopefully it hasn't affected the beer, but we'll see how we get on with that. But I was told by the guys at Pivni Ratch in Olimitz where I bought this beer, this is, should be a really, really nice one. And um, they say that this guy really knows what he's doing. So definitely looking forward to it. It's a style that I always enjoy. And as always, I hope you guys enjoy my take on this beer. So anyway, as is usual with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery website linked to my other reviews that hopefully I can do in the future from Svatilkovetsky Pivo. Very first time I'm trying one of their beers. There's all the usual social media. If you want to see more beer reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefecture, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Czech beers that I've reviewed for you. That's constantly being added to. And as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Svato Kovetsky Pivo then. So the Svato Kovetsky Pivo, they're based out to the east of Olomouc, really quite close to the zoo actually, and it was founded officially by Ivo Hirdlitska back in 2012. So apparently he learned about home brewing when a friend brewed him a beer at Christmas time one year, and then this same friend also told him about a brewing course, and after this experience he really just wanted to go and learn how to brew for himself. So he attended this course in 2009. But Ivo also met Peter Merka, who was a really well-known uh, Czech home brewer, if you like. He was really well-known in the Czech home brewing circles. And this also really kind of um, spurred him on. Apparently became quite friendly with this guy. But he started brewing his own beers at home, giving them to his friends and family and things like this. And um, they went down really well. His friends and family were apparently quite impressed. And this got him thinking about starting his own sort of commercial brewery. So he got official approval and licensing from the government in late 2011 and having spent, he basically spent all of the previous year pretty much trying to get his equipment together. It said that he took about 11 months to get all of his equipment and things together but then he started his first commercial brews in mid-2012 and Evo actually still works in his um, in his regular job. I couldn't find out what it is he actually does outside of brewing but he does still work um, as a, he still does a regular job and he only brews a couple of times a month apparently but um, as I said the guys in Pivni Raj in, uh, in Olomouc said that this is a, a really nice beer and that all the beers that he does are pretty good so this is more of a traditional type beer this one rather than a proper kind of um, craft type beer if you like but you know it's a you know it is a microbrewery that's the whole thing but more traditional in style than some of the other things that you're going to find around the Czech Republic but like I said, I enjoy the... Um I really enjoy these uh, these Czech Mavi beers, very similar to the German Dunkels, of course, which Peter, of course, my friend over at the Clueless Drinker, really got me back into recently. So we'll see how we get on with this one, but that's all you really need to know about the brewery. I'll put the uh, brewery website and stuff in the description for you below. There's not a Facebook page for these guys, unfortunately, but you can have a look at the website. It is in Czech, so just make sure you use Chrome and you've got the translate feature and things like that there. But as far as I can understand, they've got two different uh, beers. I forget what the other one's called, but it was a a Schwati, a late site beer, so it was a kind of lighter one, but it was a bit high in Plato, of course. The other thing you'll notice with the Czechs, they like to do their beers with the Plato rating, so normally you get like 11 degrees or 14 degrees or something written on the uh, on the bottle. They just like to do it like that, but it does say on the side here, this one is 5.6% alcohol by uh, volume, but it says serve at 8 degrees as well. I'll just let you have a little look at the artwork of this one before you open it up. 
but yeah, really quite nicely presented. This one, I do like that. You can see the church in the background. I wonder if that's their um, local church there in uh, Kopetsik, which is, I'm sure that's the name of the town that this one is actually from, but it's on the outskirts of... Um, of all amounts as well but yeah really nicely presented beer that nothing on the bottle cap but without further ado let's get it out and we'll get on with the taste and then we'll just see how this one behaves because like I say it swole up a little bit when I was in the plane so we need to see how this guy behaves there we are no it's actually behaving itself it is actually going to behave itself so there we go let's get that off so yeah as I say plastic bottles Definitely um, quite an interesting way to do it. I have to say that. My first ever craft beer, if you like, from a plastic bottle. But I guess we are going to have to be careful with this one as we pour it. But that's fine. The Czechs always enjoy a good head on their beers, but I think this one is going to fade away fairly quickly. Yeah, so I guess the other thing to, that might be interesting to point out with this, when it's a Tamavi beer, some of the Tamavi beers, I've seen them labelled as Tamavis, but sometimes they come across as um, they're more like Schwarz beers, to be honest with you, rather than, uh, than Dunkels. I should have said that, actually, at the start of the video. But in this one, I do suspect going by the colour may well be more of a Schwarz beer. And going by the aroma as well, this one does actually smell um, quite roasty. But as you can see, it's poured a nice, dark, sort of um, ebony rosewood colour. If I hold it up to the light, there is a little hint of a ruby sort of chestnut edge to it, but overall it is quite a, a dark looking beer, this one. You could see there was a good couple of fingers of head there. I would say the head on this one is a light sort of fawny beige. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass and quite a few little ones just heading up towards the bottom of that head there. But you know, overall it does look pretty nice. So let's take a closer look at the aroma then and just see how we get on. We can hopefully figure out whether this is a dunkel, more of a dunkel, or if it's more of a Schwarzbier. Mm. Now, when you're further away from it, it does smell like it's got a little bit of a roasty black malt backbone to it. And when you sugar it up, you definitely get a little bit of that. It's almost got a little bit of a, a kind of ashy character to it, to be honest. But there's definitely some brown sugar and bready notes in there. As I've pointed out in other reviews, the Czech malts are really um, quite nice and bready a lot of the time. That's in these breweries that are doing the IPAs and stuff like that, you get this lovely sort of traditional Czech malt base and uh, the, you know, the New World's Juicy Fruity Hops on top of it. It's really interesting. But for me, this beer, I think, it's got a little bit of both, actually. It does have a little bit of brown sugar. There's definitely some sort of toasted caramel in there. It's quite a dark, well-fired brown sugar, this one, I would say. It's definitely got a little bit of that. And there's some ro there is roasted black malt in there. I think some sort of brown bready quality as well. Yeah, definitely a little bit of that. Some biscuit maybe. And you can definitely pick up on the noble hops in there. There's a little bit of earthiness, a little bit of sort of a grassy quality as well. Maybe just a little touch of a kind of red fruity note. There is a little bit of a kind of, yeah, there's a little bit of a figgy or sort of candied strawberry note coming out of this beer. So just take a little bit of time and enjoy the aroma before you actually get stuck into it. It does smell like a like quite an interesting beer. I can't pinpoint whether this one is going to be more like a, a Schwarz beer or whether it's going to be more like a Dunkel. The Tamavis, from what I gather, they can um, vary a little bit when it comes to it. Tamavi just means like a dark beer, if you like. But yeah, let's take a little taste of this one and see how we get on then. So this one is the Karl from Svatokovetsky Pivo on the outskirts of Olam. It's just a little bit out to the east of the city near the zoo and this one is a Tamavi special at 5.6%. So let's see how we get on with this one then. Slanje, skull. Yeah, this one, it's, this beer is definitely more of a Schwarz beer. Yeah, this one is a Schwarz beer rather than a, than a sort of a Dunkel, if that makes sense. But it's nice. I will say that about this, Def but yeah, definitely a Schwarz beer, this one, rather than a, um, rather than a, a Dunkel. It's not got the sweetness for a Dunkel, for the, the sort of Dunkel beers, if you like. 
but yeah, it's got this. It, it's quite different actually from the uh, from the German Schwarzbiers. It's got that lovely um, traditional Czech malty smoothness. It, it really. It goes quite well. It's got a nice sort of roasty black malt backbone, which is what you would expect from the more kind of Schwarzbier things. I need to probably learn the Czech styles a little bit more. I don't know if there's a difference between a Tamavi and a Tamavi special. Maybe that's the difference between it being more like a Schwarzbier and it being more like a a sort of dunkel beer if you like but this one for me is really nice so with this one you can feel a little bit of that roasted uh, black malt backbone that kind of just forms the linchpin of the beer on top of that you've got a lot of nice um, bready quality to it you can definitely pick up that nice smooth Czech malt there it's almost a bit more like a kind of brown bready quality there there is a little bit of a brown sugary note in the middle of your tongue. It's quite a dark, well-fired um, kind of treacle or something like that. There is just a little touch of a brown sugar sweetness in the middle of your palate. And as you go further out towards the sides of your tongue, there's a little bit of a... Uh, I would say that there's a little bit of... Um, a kind of biscuity note coming out of this beer as well but this is a good beer like, make no mistake they've done a good job of this so well done to the guys at uh, uh, Svato Kobetsky Pivo they've done a great job of this. But yeah, I like this one. The, the way that the roasty qualities come out of this beer is really, really quite smooth. Um, and it's a beer, you know, come to think of it, there's not that many breweries in Europe um, outside of Germany, and I guess Czech Republic as well. There's not that many craft breweries actually brew Schwarz beers, to be honest with you. Not a lot of them will brew this style of beer, which is kind of a shame because it is, it's a really... Um, nice style this one. I like how it how it kind of comes across, and um, but it's it really is a shame that some craft breweries haven't kind of cottoned on to this one. There's a lot of breweries now, you know, brewing pilsners and lagers, but everyone's focusing on the IPAs and stuff like that. And um, so it is a shame that styles like this do get forgotten because when they're done well like this one, you know, they are really enjoyable. So yeah, on the hoppy side of things then. Pretty sure it's Czech hops they're using in this one. You've got a nice little bit of earthiness in the back corner of the palate. As you come further forward along the sides of your tongue, it smooths out a little bit. There's maybe a little touch of herbal quality there, just in the middle kind of sides of the palate. But as you come further forward, it really just kind of sits there nicely. Then round the very front curve of the palate, you do get a little bit of that kind of lighter grassy quality, but there is some of the earthiness just kind of uh, backing up and, of course, just behind the front curve of the palate. That's where you get that little, that that kind of nice oily bubble where the um, a little bit of the fruity juicy esters start to come out of the beer. This one doesn't have too much in the way of fruity quality, although I would say there is a little touch of a sort of red fruity note to this one. It's not tart in any way at all. It's just a little bit of a very slight sort of candied strawberry or, or something like that. Yeah. There is just a little touch of a kind of candied um, strawberry note to this beer, which is quite nice, but that's very, very mild. The focus is definitely on that roasty black malt backbone and um, the, the sort of earthy hops in this one. But this is a really nice, easy going. Um, it's a really nice, easy drinking beer. This one, I do need to try. I do need to try and find out a little bit more what the difference, if there's any difference, when it comes to the, to the Tamavis over them being a bit more um, sweet, like the German Dunkel or whether they're a little bit more roasty and toasty like this one and like the Schwarzbier of course and um, like you know the Kustritz or sort of thing is the, is the example pardon me that comes into my head but for me this is a really really nice beer I mean if you like um, if you like Schwarzbeers as I do I don't get to have them very often which is disappointing but if you enjoy a good Schwarzbier then this one is, um, is definitely one that you're going to enjoy and the thing that will surprise you about this beer I think is just how smooth it is but again that's um, a sort of uh, given when it comes to Czech beers, the Czech malts have this um, really um, sort of characteristic trademark smoothness, if you like, and in these Schwarz beers, um, it really it does work very, very well. Actually, it works well in the ones that are more like Dunkels, and even in the, the sort of lighter beers as well, in the lagers, it is really nice. For me, it's the malt I think that makes the uh, that makes the Czech beers, you know, quite distinct and quite unique. That's what I would say if someone asked me about Czech beer. But yeah, what I would say about this one as well is that the roasty uh, black malt bone in this, it's a little bit more smooth and it builds a good bridge 
between the earthy hops and the and the malt base and it just everything in this beer goes together really well as I said there's a little bit of a, a red fruity note to this one but um, overall it's just a really nice kind of easy going schwarz beer this one so if you like the likes of Kustritzer um, I think you are probably going to enjoy this one too except this one's got a little bit more kind of malty quality and it's, it's just got a little bit more depth to it I think than, uh, than Kustritzer has but a really really solid beer this one so have a go at it for yourself and see what you think in terms of the mouthfeel um, I would definitely say this beer is um, it's on the lighter side of mid-bodied um, carbonation. There is a little bit of crispness to this one, which is nice. It does make it quite drinkable, um, which, and which drinkability is one of the things that makes a lot of people not drink the darker beers, to be honest. So, but this one is quite nice and drinkable. The malt, the the mouthfeel overall, I would say, it's there's a little touch of an oily quality to it. But at the same time. It does have a little bit of wetness, so it's somewhere between a wet and an oily mouthfeel overall, this one. As I said, a little bit of hoppy bitterness from this one. It's quite an earthy um, quality that comes out of this beer. There's a nice little bit of a, a roasted um, black malt backbone in there as well. Then you've just got a little bit of a kind of um, juicy fruity quality of this. So in, for me, in terms of the Schwarz beer, this one leans a little bit towards the earthy kind of roasty toasty side of things. But if that is the, if that's what you like, then I'm pretty sure you will enjoy this one. So I think that's a good place to kind of uh, leave it with this beer. It's, it's been really nice to try this one, and I'm glad that I was able to review one of the really sort of uh, local. Uh, Olamut's breweries for you. So I hope you've enjoyed this one. It's, it's always cool to do reviews like this where not many people uh, will have actually heard of the brewery. So yeah, we'll leave it at that. So this one was the Carol, uh, a 5.6% Tamavi Special, which turned out to be one of the ones that's more like a Schwarzbier rather than a Dunkel. We'll say that to sum up. Um, but it turned out to be really nice, really nice smooth Schwarzbier, this one. And it's one that you definitely want to check out if you are in the Olomouc area. You will find this beer in uh, Pivni Ratch, which is a, a really good little beer shop next to Los Bastardos in uh, Olomouc. This is the same people that own it, but this one was really nice, and I'm glad that I got the recommendation from there. But this was the Carol from uh, Svatokovetsky Pivo, a little bit out to the east of Olomouc in Moravia in the Czech Republic. A really interesting beer, this one. It is cool to come across Schwarz beers. You don't come across them all that often, so I'm glad that I got to review this, and I hope you guys have enjoyed it. So until the next time, thank you for watching my beer reviews please like subscribe share all the usual youtube stuff do check out my social media let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below let me know what your favorite beers are from spato kopetsky pivo apologies for the pronunciation as well and uh, hopefully i can review some more from them in the fairly near future but it was really cool to review this one and i will catch you guys very soon with more czech beer reviews really interesting one this and i'm glad that i got to review it so until the next time slange just now and i will catch you guys later nastravi do give me some recommendations of some schwarz beers and uh, the tamavi specials as well the from the czech republic that are more like the schwarz beers slange just now